who's got a prospecting idea that you want to share. Again, we're talking specifically about prospecting right now. Who's got a good prospecting idea? If you uh, go uh, to the uh, school website, they'll have a listing of all the elementaries along with the principals. Okay. That's, that's what I did. Great. Great idea. A personal relationships too. Uh, I've got somebody I've got very much in mind that I've um, that I'm targeting this year. That um, she just she's a friend of ours, my wife okay. and I, and she's the principal of a school that she's just gone to, uh, Britt David uh, Elementary, which is a magnet school in a, in its type of school where the parents are quite involved in what's going on with the students. So sure. I think it's going to be a real good shot. Awesome. Another good idea. But personal relationships. So if you know somebody personally or if you know a teacher that might, you know, get you in the connect you in us. Yes, absolutely. I say use the success of one to then get your principal to introduce you to the other principals in the area. Okay. But you you got to have that one under your belt that went smoothly. You did what you said you were going to do. Mm -hmm. And it was successful for them to be able to pass your name on or get you that introduction to the rest of the principals. Okay, that's a great idea. A lot of us have high school drives, all of us, so we could use those high, like she said, use those high school contacts because most of the teachers kind of, they all know mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. Especially Absolutely. in the smaller communities. Yes, definitely. Yes. Some of your high school principals probably used to teach at the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or the elementary school principals used to teach at the high school if I get my order straight. Anybody else? Great idea. The program itself has a way for you to mass email, you know, just everybody and just see if you got any bites, uh, okay. which we did, I think, earlier this year. And we, we all did that. And I got a couple bites, but I'm kind of like um, what Shay was saying. One, one of the ones I've already visited, um, she just straight up told me, she said, you know, I don't know what kind of support we're going to get because parents at our school just don't support anything. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's what they were telling me. So Absolutely. I, I was kind of getting the EBG, just thinking about doing it. <laughs> I think then Be you honest, just focus yeah. on Johnny. Johnny. I think then you just focus on the teachers versus the versus the students, and just still call it the pint size hero. See if they can get the kids to get the teachers to give on their right. you know planning day, where there aren't any people in the school. Mm -hmm. I mean, when there aren't any students in the school. Yeah, that's a good idea too. Thanks. So Anybody else have one you want to share? Go out and look on the websites, it's one of the school's individual websites or their Facebook pages, see if they've supported any kind of cancer walks or something that ties in along with our mission. Because mm -hmm. I think you probably have better success with a school that's mm -hmm. doing those kinds of activities mm -hmm. that's supported than you would like Johnny talking about his one school where parents aren't going to support it. So I'm going to say why waste your time, but why waste your time? Yeah, absolutely. Good ideas, guys. Okay, let me sh just share some of the ones that I listed today. Some of them are the same. Research. Is there a service learning club, a club that requires community service or other connection to the school? Kind of what we were talking about. Um, one of the things that I would say to you, if you have the choice, and of course many times you don't, but if you can choose to connect with an existing organization, especially if they're a community service minded organization, um, a junior beta club is an example, something like that then they've already kind of got the structure in place. They're used to doing projects. They have a leader, hopefully, that's motivated and wants their students to be involved and, and maybe is already good at knowing how to delegate things out to each student also. Networking, Johnny talked about that, personal connections to the school. Um, I found this true in my territory. And of course, you guys that have been around a little while probably learned this also. Uh, principals tend to move around to different schools. Somebody that was a math teacher over here last year is now an assistant principal over here next year and so on and so on. And uh, you can reestablish relationships sometimes. Uh, unfortunately, also you find out that that principal that wasn't very supportive sometimes moves along to another school and you have to try to overcome that sometimes too. But, but kind of just keeping tabs of what's going on. Uh, this time of year, obviously, every year there's lots of changes because people move around, people retire, people change positions, uh, and sometimes that can be to our benefit. Planning ahead. Uh, you may not close the deal in one visit. 
and that's something I think sometimes we overlook as well. You may have to work five to six months ahead to meet the school calendar. Again, we're talking about kind of the analogy of planting seeds again. Uh, you may or may not be able to get the success immediately. You may have to be looking farther out on your calendar. And of course, we all have to work in advance to meet our calendar needs anyway. And persevere, building relationships if the time is not right yet to say yes. Sometimes I think that we fall short because we try to force a yes. We sell something because we need to add a blood drive and we miss out sometimes on the potential. I feel like in our region that's what's happened because I've shared this information in the past and kind of just frankly felt frustrated because I felt like people weren't taking that out and using it because there's nothing special about the presentations that I do. I'm not a superstar, rock star, or anything like that, but it seemed like other people maybe weren't willing to follow through with the long term because it does take some work to get these things going but if you go in and you allow them to under buy what you're selling, then guess what kind of results you're going to get. I want to use a quick example for you. This person is long retired, so they won't see this video and go hunt me down. But one of the examples that always kind of stuck in my mind was I had a former coworker that had a high school blood drive that was about two and a half, three hour drive and we used to drive two buses there every time they had a blood drive. Imagine driving two buses, two and a half to three hours, because they wouldn't allow us to come inside the building. Now, I wasn't there for any of those meetings or any of those negotiations, and I'm judgmental, I'll tell you that up front, but what I was thinking was, she's missed out on a sales opportunity. Surely there's a gym, a band room, an auditorium somewhere in that building that we could have the blood drive. We all know it would be much more comfortable and enjoyable for those donors than giving on the bus. It would save the Red Cross a lot of money. And how many times has the bus broke down halfway there and you end up with a half a blood drive, you know? No, we wouldn't have a blood drive at all. <laughs> or no blood drive at all. That's possible. We, we'd be over two. We wouldn't be 50%. That's all Just possible too. So sometimes you, you, you may have to walk away. You know, or you may have to, uh, in the example you guys were giving about low parent involvement, maybe you lower your expectations. You can still have a PSH drive, but you say we're not going to collect as much as we might in another school of the same size. Some prospecting tips, and the first one I've listed here is not as relevant at this time of year. I don't know what your school calendars are like. How, how many weeks away are you guys from starting school? Two to three days. Yesterday. Yesterday. Two to three started. days. Okay. Started. Are starting. Summer, <coughs> Summer County started today. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I heard on the radio somebody talking about starting yesterday, and I thought, this must be the skies falling if we're starting our kids at school in July, for goodness sake. That's but ridiculous. You, but you get out in May. July 31st. That's crazy still. So, anyway, <laughs> uh, but just keep in mind that the principals are not off all summer. It took me a while to figure that out. I'll be honest with you. I didn't realize that the principals didn't just check out. And sometimes that's a really good time to catch them because they don't have all the stresses of their regular time. There can be a lot of success in cold calling. Throw your hand up if you like cold calling. Okay. A lot of people don't. I don't normally like cold calling. But I've had a lot of success in cold calling with Pint Size Hero programs. I've had a lot of times where I've gone in and run into 14 gatekeepers and walk away and thinking I wish I wouldn't have stopped there. Mm -hmm. But I've also had times where I've gone in, met the principal, looked at the gym, got all the site information I needed, met the coordinator, future coordinator, and walked out with everything I needed except a date for the blood drive. Now those are good days, right? You're excited when you do that, when you get back in the car and you go, yes. One of those schools uh, ended up collecting somewhere in the 45 to 50 range for me for two or three, four years before I left that area. So that was a good win situation. That was a good day. So cold calling to me is, is a, a lot of times successful. If you have a few extra minutes, you're in that area anyway. Okay, let's look at selling the program. So we've kind of talked about this a little bit already. Some of you guys are already ahead of me in the, in the slideshow, and that's good because you're already thinking and realizing what some of our challenges are and what some of our roadblocks may be. We've got to sell the entire program. 
To me, that's a vital piece of this. And again, it's up to you and it's up to your district manager's discretion about where that line is drawn, about whether you walk away and don't even have a blood drive at that school, or you come to some kind of compromise, and we're going to talk about negotiating a little bit later. But again, I think across the board, one of the mistakes that we've made as account managers is that we've settled for less than what the full-blown program brings to mind. And when you see those results that I showed you earlier, every one of you guys can have those kind of results and even better, but you have to set it all up to, to, in the beginning in the way you want it set up. Because we all know that people are going to try to settle for less, right? We're asking them for volunteer hours. We're asking them for volunteer support. We're asking them to interrupt their school day. All those horrible things that they're thinking when they hear what we want to do. And if we settle for less than the entire program up front, then the results are going to be lower. And I kind of feel like this. If you start on the mountain and you've got the whole thing, then over time you've got to be careful before it starts to fade anyway, right? So if you start halfway up and then it's going to fade, guess what? You're not going to have a viable blood drive for very long, right? If you go to a school that has 600 students and you're able to collect 30, that may sound good, but if you collect 30 today, three, four, five, six years from now, you may be collecting 18. If you start out collecting 50 today and you lose that much, you're still in a viable blood drive that's maybe above your typical average. It would be for me. If I get into a 30, 35 range, that's still above what my average is. So that's still a good blood drive for my territory. So selling the entire program is vital from the beginning. Get to the key decision maker. You guys were asking a question over here earlier about whether you talk to the principal first or whether you talk to a teacher. To me, part of that depends on what your relationship is, but let's just say you're going into a complete cold call situation. You have no connection at all to that school. I want to be talking to the key decision maker right up front. I don't want anybody else to be selling my program for me. You know, sometimes if we, for example, if we call on the PTO and we talk to the PTO secretary, let's just say, and they say, yeah, we've got a meeting coming up. We'll bring that up at our next meeting. We'll talk about it. To me, I've already lost because I want to be the one presenting the information and having the opportunity to hear them say yes or no. Because what happens if they say no? I've got an opportunity to negotiate, right? I've got an opportunity to overcome an objection. Do your homework. Relate the blood program to something the school is already doing well and takes pride in. Again, that's something that you guys have already mentioned. If they're doing a, a cancer awareness type of thing, if they have a, a child that, that uh, passed away from cancer in the last couple of years and they do some kind of tribute for that child, connect in with that. Um, if they have organizations that are already connected, FCA or Junior Beta or something like that, that are already connected with community service, then it's a nice marriage to just line that right into that group. Some of the successes that I've had have been the types of situations where the coordinator tells me later, this was a really great project for my students. That's a grand slam home run right there, guys, because if we go and have a successful blood drive and the teacher and or principal think, hey, that was a really good learning experience for our kids, then you're talking about a long-term relationship that you're establishing with that particular school. Be prepared to negotiate. Again, I talked about that a minute ago. Um, almost every school has PE classes in their gym, don't they? Where else are they going to have PE? Well, you got to negotiate and explain to them, hey, we understand that we're asking for you to make room in the gym, but you know, a lot of schools that we work with, you know, this school down the road, somebody mentioned using a success that you already have. Uh, to mention to somebody else, you can say, hey, most of the schools that we work with, they plan an alternate schedule the day of the blood drop so they can free the gym up to, to have the blood drop. Or if they absolutely won't let you have the gym, then what else is available? You know, Is the stage and the auditorium, is that an option? Is the band room an option? Where else is an option? And looking for opportunities to overcome those barriers is important. We can't do it on stages. I learned that lesson the hard way. 
Well, you could if you had ground floor access. Right. That's what I'm talking. It would have to be a ground floor access situation. Absolutely. Oh. And have a plan on which month you want to schedule them in. And I don't know how your individual schedules work, but going in with an idea because you know sometimes if you go in and you say, hey, when would you like to have a blood drive? They're going to tell you they want to do it in October. Mm -hmm. You may be fully booked in October, and that's not really when you want them. You really want them the first couple of weeks of December, maybe. So going in with an idea of when you want to schedule them is important because, again, that's a part of your sales approach is to say, hey, we have this great need for our patients in December. We'd love for you guys to connect with that. Setting the projection. I'm glad Dean left the room. It's perfect timing for Dean to leave the room. That's exactly what I was just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about anything of relevance for you, Dean. Everything that I'm going to share about setting the projection, of course, has to be discussed with your district manager. He's got to be comfortable with this. But I'm going to give you a starting point that I've used and, and found to be successful, not always, okay? But it's given me kind of a barometer. And we're also going to talk about how you have, may have to make uh, adjustments to that. Again, if you have a school that's in a low income area that the parents just aren't as involved, then you might have to adjust down for that. But if you set it too low to begin with, then what happens? If you have 35 appointment times and they sign up 55 kids then or 55 donors, then what happens? You got a mess, right? I mean, that's only going to happen one time if you're not able to deliver and see 55 donors. And again, if you've already planned it out that way and you find out a week ahead of time, then you probably got a mess. So this is one of the trickiest parts, of course. You guys do this work every day. This is one of the trickiest parts of our job in general, is what in the world is this projection going to be on this? These people are promising me the sky, and I'm down here on reality check, and where do I match that up in the middle? So setting a projection is an important part of this up front. Use the student population as a gauge for participation. Again, we know these kids can't donate blood themselves, but at least by using the population of the school, you can begin to say, okay, what is their participation percentage? I start with 10%. 10% productive based upon the student population ratio. So if I have 400 students in my school, I'm going to project that drive at 40 units. Ooh, I did 5%. I was going to ask, how, to, how relevant do you guys, is that anywhere close to what you've been doing? Five you've been doing five? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, so Dean is sweating I, at 10%. I've got a board with numbers and a dart, and I just... <laughs> <laughs> you look I, at your bracelet, and then you fire away. That's right. That's right. Okay. 10%. Again, this is not this is not an exact science, right? It's hard. It's hard to pick a projection that's going to end up being accurate. Do you have another comment? Um, I think ten percent is, is is a good starting point, um, but I think with our selling process, you will get an i you should get an idea of where they will fall within that. Ten percent may not be enough. Um, if if you get buy in from the principal, if you get buy in from a superintendent who pushes it down to principals, that can either go, that can go two ways. You could have principals that get 100% behind that because mm -hmm. their superintendent wants it, and then you got principals that say, well, you know, he's telling me, to, or he or she's telling me to do this. I'm not really on board on that, but, right. you know, they're not wearing we'll the bracelet. have one. They're That's not wearing right. the same bracelet you That's wear. Right. I think 10% is a real good starting point, but when you get used to this process, you'll use that as a starting point. You might go up or down from that. Absolutely. Well, efficiency is, I got to start <laughs> <laughs> if efficiency is good, then you can go for it. You right? can go for the 10%. It's not, I'd say, five. <laughs> well, let's talk about what you just said there a second ago. I'll take a little poll here. If you had a uh, school district that you'd never dealt with before, how many of you would go straight to the superintendent and say, we'd like to do blood drives in all five of these schools? Raise your hand if you'd go straight to the superintendent and do that. Y'all are scared like I am, huh? That can't go either way. I have done that and made it work, but I've also been scared to do that because if you get a no at the top, mm -hmm. you put a kibosh on the entire <clears throat> thing, right? And I, ha I do have one county in particular that I've worked with in the past, 
and their results have been pretty meager to say the least. But I had two schools that were having active blood drives and the other, I think, three elementary schools of those, uh, one had had a blood drive that was tremendously successful and after that the principal absolutely would not even let me in the door again and she wouldn't tell me why. So I don't know what exactly happened along the way, but I got the sense that she thought it was way too much work for whatever her teacher had involved. That was it. And the other school uh, that I approached, I kept running into a roadblock with the principal because he had been a principal at a school before that I'd called on and he wouldn't give me the time of day there either. So I had a couple of schools that were kind of actively participating and doing okay, and I never could get these other two on board. And so I thought, okay, if I go to the superintendent, I might get two more, but I might lose the two that I already have. So that's a really dicey proposition if you go straight to the superintendent. Now, if you had a relationship with that person, maybe. Um, but I was just curious about what you guys thought about that. Now, adjusting the projection. Yes, you have to adjust. And th these are some of the areas that I, that I look at. And again, you guys know your territory. So you may know some different factors that you have to look at as well. The first factor is a socioeconomic level. Unfortunately, in our more poor communities, we don't have as good a response level from our parents. Uh, the travel distance for parents to work. You know, if you're in a rural community and most people commute to go other places, you're not going to get as good a response. That's something that we, that we have um, going for us kind of in McCracken County is the fact that a lot of people work in that area where their schools are, where their kids are. So they can uh, come by after work or even get off during work because most of these blood drives that I, that I talked about before with McCracken County and most of the others, uh, typically a 12.30 to 5.30 or a 1 to 6 are the time frames that I've been using. So you end up getting people throughout the afternoon at different points in time. Overall school climate, again we talked about that a little bit before, some places will be honest with you and tell you, hey, we have really poor parent support, poor parent involvement, um, and you have to factor that in. And again, maybe the decision is it's not time right now to have a blood drop at the school. Or maybe it's a way, uh, like somebody mentioned over here, connecting with the teacher specifically or whatever you want to look at. Let's uh, take another breakout session here. It says 15 minutes. We don't have to take that long. But let's share some ideas about the organizing and executing the specific nuts and bolts. Okay, you've gotten a yes from this principal. They said, yes, we're going to have a blood drive. Now, when it comes to organizing and executing that blood drive, let's use the same groups that we had before. You guys just take a few minutes and share. Uh, write down your ideas so you can share some of those with the group.